by the way, um, I am streaming over at twitch.tv slash young number five nine Wolong Fallen Dynasty having a blast on that game. Y'all come check us out over there. But today we're gonna be talking about uh, uh, Ant-Man Quantumania, a writer that has some interesting to say things to say about <clears throat> Modoc. Now, as with like I don't know, most of the characters these days in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they are n they're making all these changes, right? Uh, they don't the original versions and the original works originally inspired works nowadays do not fit within the scope of what writers, directors, producers are trying to do with the Marvel Cinematic Universe now. Now, I've long checked out. It is. Saw this goofy looking uh, MODOK, which is, you know, weird considering. Yeah, it's obviously MODOK is this like massive just floating head or whatever. But if you look at like his original appearances, for example, you see that there's some intimidation kind of uh, uh, factor there that is, a, you know, they're trying, that's trying to be there and they could have made a more serious one and it probably would have worked well, uh, if, uh, way, way better than whatever the hell it was here. However, the writer of this who wrote him in the way that they did uh, has this to say and uh, as a reporter by direct, which I'm guessing he had a conversation with someone else. We'll read here in a little bit. Uh, for his MCU adaptation, the character was retconned to be uh, Corey Stoll's Darren Cross, having survived his catastrophic defeat in 2015 original's uh, Ant-Man film. As it turns out, he survived his journey into the quantum realm and was saved, but uh, at all, by Jonathan Majors Kang, yada yada. Uh, many fans have been vocal about the displeasure regarding the, uh, his adaptation, both in how his story is handled and the uh, VFX. Yeah, he looks freaking silly. He looks goofy as all get out. That is absolutely true. Um, that he does look goofy. But they also changed the story. Uh, it's kind of upbringing. Again, it's not anything uncommon right now. That's just what they're doing right now with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're doing it a lot more. And I'd say that they didn't do it in the past when I think more people were into this. But they are doing it a lot more now. In an interview with Vital Thrills, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania writer. Jeff Loveness shared his feelings on MODOK while standing firm on MCU's adaptation of the villain. When asked if a variant of course, those villain might show up as an Avenger, uh, Loveness promised that if he did, he will be even stupider. The Avengers that Kang Dynasty scribe uh, uh, stated that he refuses to listen to the fans who want a more serious adaptation. Uh, if I say yes, I promise you he will be even more stupid. This is what he's saying, or even stupider. I refuse to listen to fans on this. Anytime you say that, uh, that line, like, I refuse to listen to fans, anything that follows that is is a recipe for disaster. Um, I will not make MODOK serious as long as I'm alive. They're not going to get the, that serious adaptation that those four fans want because it's just a couple of fans that, that uh, have a gripe here. Uh, he'll be a big dumb head, that's all. It says, speaking with Slash Film, the writer revealed that it wasn't actually his idea to turn uh, Darren Cross into MODOK. Instead, it was the director Peyton Reed's idea. And he says that right, right here. Uh, Loveness went on to say that the fans who are divided on the villain are wrong and that he'll, he'll go to the mat for MODOK. Let me say this. Let me just say that the people who are divided, they're wrong. This is, man, like this is, this is interesting, man. I will go to the mat for MODOK. I am so happy. And it was such a fight. And it was such a labor of love and passion. Yeah, that's that's what it was. Uh, and all just to get the comedy balance of this guy. And hey, I'm a big comics guy. Sure you are. Um, uh, uh, he says, I'm sure you are too. We're on the internet. And, you know, just you know, people on the internet pretending to be fans of things is one thing. He says, uh, people got opinions. Those MFs are wrong. I'm sorry you want to do a serious take on MODOK. I played that Avengers game on PS5. Good luck. Uh, yeah, yeah. Come back later. To, drew, to truly drive the point home, he made it very clear that he's very happy with what they did. Look, it's just kind of the rhetoric and what it is that he's using when he's talking about he's not listening to fans. Um, he doesn't want to listen to fans. That's that's the current state of Marvel, guys. And this is why, look, man, the, the people that are still holding out hope for this company, in both books and live action, I think at this point you're just being silly. Okay. Uh, they've given you and shown you more than enough evidence that you are not the person that has the interest in mind. They appeal to to normies. Really, that's the biggest appeal. People that have zero frame of reference. So really, all they're gra grabbing now is characters and name and maybe likeness. 
So you'll get like a costume design or something that makes them look sort of like what they look. But in terms of how they act, in terms of core parts of their story and core parts of who these characters are in the source material, they don't care about that. That is in the way. Uh, when they don't have a frame of reference themselves, that gets in the way. You don't have to be knowledgeable on anything where you can just do whatever. It's a free-for-all. I've told y'all that. I've been telling y'all this for a while. This is a free-for-all. I'm over there, and you're the last person that they listen to. And this is why, I'm laying on this note, this is why I believe that the whole, like, independent scene and, and how, like, with the Reverse, for example, and I have a direct line of sight with my audience, right, and, and how they do things. Look, man, there's going to be people, not, you're not going to get 100% of people liking what it is you do for anything. And, yes, you have to be able to assess what's noise and what's not. That takes a certain level of talent to be able to do that. But the beautiful thing about what it is that we do is because we have a direct line of sight. So everybody's bottom line is impacted by exactly this. Well, when you get these mega corporations, man, these guys are commissioned for the most part for their work. They're getting paid regardless. Maybe if they got a producer credit, they may be getting bonuses. But for the most part, most of these guys that are working on these projects, they got paid to do the gig and then they're out and they're moving on to the next gig. How, how good that film does is irrelevant to uh, whether or not they're going to get paid unless at least specifically for that gig. Uh, so that attachment, they don't have like, like we have where I have a direct attachment to you guys because you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's selling this product. I am the owner of this this company and I am the guy that's facilitating this whole deal. And I think that's the advantage that a lot of, let's say smaller entities are going to have over these mega corporations because this is their attitude. They don't like you. They don't want to listen to you. And these are just the facts. So you got to kind of navigate and act accord accordingly. Excuse me. Wherever you're viewing the content, I appreciate you. If you enjoyed it, you may be interested in my comic book company, Riververse Comics. Our first book and campaign, I Sum Number One, brought in $3.7 million with tens of thousands of satisfied customers. Visit Riververse.com to check out our store and stay up to date with the latest campaigns from one of the hottest new comic book companies. Also, my first big step towards a parallel economy was the development of my personal website, EricDJuly.com. This entirely replaced my Patreon. Now, if you enjoy this content, please consider becoming a member over at the website. We have an ever-expanding list of perks for various membership tiers, a forum, and a phone app. Some of these perks will even benefit you if you're fans of the Ripperverse. Anyway, I appreciate you so much for being a supporter and or customer. I even got a little love for my haters.